Blog Talk Radio. Hey guys, it's those guys, and I'm Matt Marrero, along with the other host, Tristan Walter. Futuristic, depressed Tristan Walter. Uh, but anyway, so we are doing our. This is not our first ever Black Friday episode, which is weird. Because I'm pretty sure, I don't remember what we've done before on Black Friday, but we've done some other things. I know that for an episode of Those Guys Play Once for Black Friday, Satish Ram and I played Whispering Willows, an interesting game on Steam. But, because uh, for that one, it was like, oh, let's do something scary, because it's black, you know, because I, 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 we, you know, you know us, I always want to do something uh, like a <laughs> horror-themed game on the channel. It's me. I, I like... I know I like Halloween, but in Why this don't case, we just it's not name everything Matt's spooktacular podcast. Well, now it's happening. Just those guys spook. No, but seriously, I, I'm I <laughs> you can leave. Um, I hang up. So, so. The reason why we're doing this on Black Friday, though, well, it's it's twofold. Hopefully, if you are listening to this on Black Friday, you've you've stayed home with your family, you haven't consumed. That much, you know, we've – because I have no – you know me. I have no problem with capitalism and consumption. But at the same time, when it comes to Black Friday, it's just like it's Thanksgiving Day weekend. I still – I remember a time when it was sacred. I'm old enough to remember yeah. a time. But uh, but I remember – do you remember when it used to be, oh, it's Thanksgiving Day. Everyone's with their goddamn families. Do you remember that? Minus a few jobs, understandably. But, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, retail. No, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought I of this show. I I remember the olden times. But still I remember older... the times before the, Yes. Before the Empire. <laughs> okay, you're going for the Empire, I'm thinking before all yeah. the oil ran out. No. Oh god. Just Mad Max. <laughs> uh, I mean Black Friday does <laughs> kind of seem like Mad Max in a way, doesn't before it? Before the sales went up. 6 p.m. on Thursday evening on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and Morton Joe working retail as a Walmart greeter. Anyway. Oh, my God. I could see it. I could see it, too. But anyway, seriously, though, seriously, though, uh, we're talking about Black Mirror because I really do think that it kind of coincides with this very dystopian future day that is Black Friday. Yep. Also, it should be noted, we're also with our families right now, or were for the day, because you and I, um, we've recorded this in advance. Yeah. So we're not, we're not doing this live on Black, uh, on Black Friday, God. but thank fucking God. That'd be I depressing as I shit. I wouldn't want to feel like this. Neither would I. Um, because here's the thing, right? So I, I want to personally... I don't know what I'm feeling anymore, Matt. I think you've broken me. This isn't no... <laughs> I didn't do it with this. No. This right. isn't this is this is something that's been done for years. People friends in our friends group tried to break you like like as a joke. They'd be like, Oh, that's not a joke that he likes. Let's start it off normally and then twist it into that joke and then your expression like before memes were even a thing, our friends tried to like meme you within our own friend group and you're acting like this one television show. <laughs> has left oh, you broken. Okay. So, so you're blaming it on my... <laughs> no, I'm just saying this isn't the first time you've said the phrase, I think I'm broken. But it's, uh, I think it's... I think. Oh, I think oh please, it's, Tristan. Your friend broke you long ago. <laughs> Me being one of them. <laughs> I'll resemble that oh. remark. I'm just saying that I'm just trying to say that this is the first time you said it on a recording, so everyone's going to be like, I can't believe Matt did that. It's like, no, 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 no. Other people who are now listening to this going, ha, ha, we did do that. Uh, friends of ours are laughing while listening to this, so we should we should note that as well. But still, we're talking about the first season of Black Mirror, as you can tell from the title of the video. Now, what is the first season? I say that because Netflix picked it up, so I think a bunch of people came in, and I'm not trying to be like, you posers. I'm just saying a bunch of people came in, and even though on Netflix it does list season one, two, three, and four, they also, depending on where you're watching it, at least on my uh, smart TV, they have the episodes listed in a really weird 
order as well. Like, I guess they're trying to get people started up on the newest season because that's the Netflix one. Because Netflix eventually picked it up. The first two seasons were off Netflix. I'm not saying Netflix never had it on their platform, but uh, they still, it wasn't like Netflix exclusive, that whole thing. So it was, I'm pretty sure I found it uh, online. It was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was aired on BBC, maybe like Channel 4 or something like that. It was something like that. E4? I don't remember. Because I saw this back when it first, not when it first aired, but I saw this around 2012, 2013. This show is seven years old now. Wow. And yet still, the themes from the first three episodes, I'm like, I could see that happening. Politician pig fucking, I can see it. Like, it's, it's, it's nearly a decade this show's been out. And I'm like, all of these things seem just as true, if not more true, from when they first aired. Which to some people are like, Matt, come on, seven years, it's not a long time, dude. And it's like, here's the thing, though. When it comes to tech, seven years is a long time. That's fair. Like, the jump that we've seen between, like, even if it's something from, like, 80 to 87, or, like, 87 to 94, 94 to 01, like, the jumps in tech that we've seen within, like, a seven-year span, you know, recently, over the last, like, 20, 30 years, it's crazy to think that within the seven years, like, Twitter had just started in, like, what, 2010? Uh, Like, some of the viral... Because some of the viral numbers that they were talking about, like, oh, Oh, this video has been has been seen millions of times. And I'm laughing. I'm like, now it would be billions because right, of how right. everything has progressed. So it's just so int- – and how people are so even more entrenched in things like social media. I mean, looking at the buying avatars thing, I'm not – you know, in the second episode, I'm not saying that people didn't do that on, like, their Xbox or, you know, Mii's and things like that because people had – you know, the Wii has been around since the mid-2000s. But still – having it become that entrenched in their lives is something that I think I've seen even more over the past seven years where, and and when this first aired in 2011, it would be feasible, plausible. Oh yes. People could do that one day, get so entrenched to that point, you know, because people have been doing it with MMORPGs online in the nineties as well. So it's not like this is, you know, that's like completely new territory. It's almost as if the mirror reflects it's the image that's staring into it soullessly and dying. Hey, Tristan, I'm going to do a Fortnite dance. Oh, my Just get the kids all happy. Am I flossing? No one can fucking see me. Um, how, did still. You, how did you manage to make that? I derailed the joke. You brought it back with a worse joke, but still made me laugh with it. God damn you. Uh, <laughs> so have you. Okay, so I'm looking at the time right now. It's. Even though it's not too late, have you started drinking yet? Did you start drinking no. when you saw this episode? I'm no, you probably should have. Oh, I you're sick. Yeah. Um, either way, though. So we're doing, because the reason why I also talk about. I couldn't drink and watch this for the cast. Oh, I'm so That's sorry. Funny. Yeah, the one time, the one time you're like, I have to be sober because I'm assuming you're on medication. <laughs> I'm taking that last as a yes. I'm assuming you're on medication right now. Uh, I'm taking that as a yes. Oh, no. Okay. But still, uh, another reason why I wanted to bring up the whole, oh, Netflix versus, you know, the original series uh, thing is because also on Netflix, they have – they have season one listed as three episodes. That is true. Season two, they included the Christmas special as, I think, the first episode or part of the season two lineup. Not as true. Yeah. And then the other, yeah. the other seasons seem to be six episodes each. So uh, they got some, they oh, got some yeah, of that money. Yeah. Yeah, right. which because 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 here's the thing, right? I'm not saying that none of the actors or actresses in these first three episodes are like completely unknown, like you've never seen them anywhere else. Some of them went on yeah. to become doctors, but uh, within other fields of study, but some of yeah, them have went on I to mean, become doctors. It was great. I love seeing Jodie Whittaker, and then it was like, oh God, oh God, why is this happening? <laughs> Yeah, no, I was like, I'm seeing Jodie Whittaker. Is that my baby or is it his? Oh, God, I'm seeing Jodie Whittaker. Yeah, I'm just going to watch Doctor Who next week and be like, 
Uh. Anyway, what what I'm trying to get at though is is that um, even though not every single actor was unknown. I like this because in a way it reminds me of watching Cloverfield where I do know who TJ Miller is now. And he was a, you know, he was still a popular enough comedian at the time with the first Cloverfield. Uh, TJ Miller was the one holding the camera most of the time. I forgot his character's name. He had like curly hair, short curly hair. He was the funny guy yeah. in that, in the group, like in the first Cloverfield. But I do think yeah. that this show, I just think that this show works very well without bigger celebrity cameo appearances. Oh uh, yeah, because that's true. because I've heard some later ones get some celebrities that I feel like if I know them, it can still be a dystopian future. Don't get me wrong, but I do think yeah. that it's even like when it comes to Twilight Zone, Shatner because of how we know him post Twilight Zone, it's great to go back and see him overacting in Twilight Zone. Uh, oh god! So god. I have no problem looking. I have no problem looking back on Black Mirror and being like, oh, dude, he's from Get Out, and he was in Black Panther, or looking at the third episode and going, that's Jodie Whittaker, oh, shit. But at the time, I was happy to be able to you know, kind of just see them and not connect them to other characters that they've been. Right, yeah. Especially in a show like this, where in any other show, with a, because if you guys don't know, the show is an anthology series, and with an anthology series, you have to really get everything in that one episode and soak all that in. So it's hard to get to know some of them sometimes. So if it was a long-running show, it's different, because I'm like, oh, I'll get to know them, and they'll become a completely different character. A bit like how Tennant, I don't look at him as the Doctor when I see him as Kilgrave. I'm just like, I hate you. You're terrible. You see what I mean? Yeah, okay. But if but if he had to be a character like that in one episode of Black Mirror, I don't know if it would work as well. He's a great actor, but I think right. you need a long-running show to kind of get that you did this titular character in a show kind of feel off of you. That's just my take on it, right? So when looking at this okay. first yeah. season, and looking at this first season, I think it was nice, because that's the thing, right? You're seeing the third episode, and all you're thinking, not all, but one of the things you're thinking of is, I know her as the Doctor. Yeah. So, episode one was powerful, I would argue, to you. Not just because of some of the unsavory, oh God, I could say pig fucking, and it's not a euphemism. But, uh, <laughs> still, some of that unsavory, some of those unsavory bits. I have not been thinking of that joke all day, but thank you. Uh, but still. But, like, isn't it nice to, like, if you see the guy playing the prime minister, to not think, oh, yeah, he played so-and-so, and this episode is so-and-so. He fucked a pig. Right. Cool. Sure. Like, you know, sure. like, he's just the politician. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Now, question, as we're talking about this, which, you know, every single episode, because we're just jumping between all three for this one, which episode felt, made you the most uneasy? Because I want to give an apology to you. I tried to say this before. I apologize because I didn't realize the show would make you feel uneasy because we had watched some Shyamalan stuff that was really ball-to-the-wall fucking horrifying slash horrible in some ways. So I thought, oh, like, as long as there's no, like, re, 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 oh, you know, no he's, bloody murder. He's, nice. he's desensitized to that by now. <laughs> well, I'm desensitized. Well, no, no, no. I thought, yes. As, so if there's none of that, because there, no, there was no blood, there was no guts. Like, we watch Attack on Titan for podcasts. Right. So I'm like, okay, I think he might enjoy this. But apparently, certain situations that involve tension that isn't cartoony or action-filled, apparently... That's a problem. I didn't know that. I mean, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's fine. I watched it. Um. Right. <laughs> no, because you were coming at me with like, it's, this is so tense, and I haven't seen these in a while. So I'm like, what is he talking about? And then I'm because, and then I'm watching them, but I'm like, okay, I can kind of see where he's going. Another one. I can kind of see another one. Oh my god, why? <laughs> like, like, why is this happening? But uh, I mean, but. I just like to use hyperbole too, but um, right. Well, it's, yeah. it's hard to gauge through text. True, because this is. I mean, a friend of another friend of mine who's not been on the show. Um, she showed me a few episodes of Black Mirror as well, um, mostly from the fourth season, I believe. Right, Netflix season. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and the first episode that she showed me probably made me more uncomfortable than any of the ones that I watched tonight. See, I told him. <laughs> I, for the record, everyone, I told him. I said, creepy shit's going to be in it, but it's not going to be a horror-filled... I'm not saying the one you watched was horror-filled, because I've only seen right. uh, two seasons worth. So yeah. I have... I never saw the Christmas one, sadly, really? but I've only seen two seasons That's worth of, of Black Mirror. The weird, the weird part of it for me is I like the fact that they go for tension more than, you know, outright gore. Like, it feels more of like an Alfred Hitchcock situation. Like, we're going for the tense moment. Yeah. Killing and blood and gore and blah, 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 also, blah, blah, all over the place. Also, very Twilight Zone-esque, which I think is why yeah. this thing has gained so much traction, because it does feel like a 21st century Twilight Zone. Nothing wrong with the original Twilight Zones. I could watch them even if they're not in, you know, glorious HD on Netflix. I can right, still yeah. watch an old DVD. I don't give a fuck, right? But Oh, yeah. I still love, you know, I'll watch, you know, Twilight Zone, black and white. Like, I usually try and yeah. catch it when they do marathons for, like, New Year's and stuff like that. It's always fun. Yeah. But it's still a good thing to be able to watch this and see stuff mm-hmm. that is both our present and our future, and God damn it, we see it coming. Like it's, It just feels like right. it's a nice updated version, because you would never have stuff like this in Twilight Zone, because if you did, it'd be some weird thing where it's just like, I'm taking a picture using the new phone, and it'd still be a fucking rotary. So, I think maybe that's it. I think it's because... Like, I can't exactly pinpoint why like these episodes get me so hard. I mean, some of it is subject matter and that's just, that's just me. Mm. But like, and it's, it's not like I don't like this series. I do. It's a great show. It, it, it tells its stories very artfully. And I, I appreciate that. It's just not something that I would be like, Oh, it's Friday night. Let me sit down and watch this. I have to be like, all right, I'm going to watch this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, no, 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 no. Like, like I one. watch. I could just sit down like, and be like, "Oh, I can watch this whenever." Um, I guess you know, it's I don't because maybe because it feels so much closer. Like, I guess in a way, Twilight Zone. Yes, you know, there are certain human themes that will always replay themselves and are you know timeless. But I guess maybe the idea that you know this is a little bit more modern. Mm-hmm. is yes. what makes it less that you can kind of detach yourself from the situation. I see where you're coming from 100%. Seeing Burgess Meredith as the devil is a bit different than having a YouTube video go viral. Yeah. Based on based around this politician and stuff like that. Like ha- seeing even though we're uh we're from the US of A, if you couldn't tell from our accents, uh we're from New York, but <laughs> But we still know a little bit about, like, okay, yeah, that's the prime minister. Okay, that's the princess oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, we can, like it's right. not like that's completely foreign. We're just like, wait a minute, there's yeah. a princess over there? Like, yeah, like, no, I could totally follow all that. <laughs> I No, no, no. And, but that's what I'm saying. It's still real to us. Yes, it's not our politics, yeah. but it's still the real world versus Burgess Meredith, who, if you don't remember, uh, I don't mean just you, Tristan, anyone listening, watching. Uh, he played the Penguin in Batman 66, the 1966 version with Adam West. And he also played Rocky's trainer in Rocky. Ah, okay. So, and he was like, but he's also like the devil twice, two fucking times in different situations. <laughs> In um, in Twilight Zone, one of them he helped a failing newspaper, and then right. the other one I forgot why he played the devil, but I was just like going two for two there, Meredith. Uh, but still, <laughs> he but no, but it was very interesting because I knew he was the devil because he just has that fucking the way he walks and talks, and then when the guy left, he lit a cigarette, his own cigarette, just using his thumb. Right, and I was like, oh, that's the devil. That's the devil. So yeah, yeah there's um, always but, a moment where you just look up and be like, mm, "You're the devil, aren't you?" <laughs> always, there's always that one moment where you're like, "Yep, that's the devil right there." Yep, so that's the devil. it's a bit different. But I also should note, I don't watch this for like Friday night enjoyment either. Like Tristan's talking, like I don't sit there watching this with pop, you know, with popcorn. I watched it with a clenched butthole, a very clenched. <laughs> 
height. <laughs> like, like if anyone is sitting there like, I've had way too much prune juice. You want to tighten a sphincter, you watch this show. You just make it clenched. Oh. Yeah, no. Oh. Like, watching this show, I'm pretty sure a trainer oh. would tell me these. that's considered an exercise. Watching this show. <laughs> oh, like, are you scared of flat butt syndrome? Well, just watch this, and you'll get <laughs> buns of steel in no time. Basically. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah, no, this show, there's a lot to it. Ooh. There's a lot to unpack. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. So, oh, God. But I have mm. to say, though, uh, so you, okay, so I already asked you, uh, which one makes you is the most tense for you? I should have because I, I went into the apologies. Which one of these episodes made you the most tense? Because for me, I think even though the third one is my favorite concept, it might be the third due to some of the domestic violence stuff and the guy just getting overly aggressive and shitty. Where even though I didn't realize it was a marriage until midway through because they didn't really announce it as a marriage at first, yeah, but even then yeah. I was like, divorce his ass. Right, yeah. Like, I think because it was such an easy one, I think maybe it made me, like, tense, where it's just like, either get a divorce or get an open marriage. It's quote-unquote simple. Fucking do something about it. Right, yeah. Whereas the other two, it's kind of like there was no other easier – like, with the first one, it was like, well, what do we do? It's like, a human life is on the line? Yes. Get the pig ready. What do you mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. A human life <laughs> is on the line. You get right. that pig. Is there time for dinner? Romance a little bit if need be. Oh but a human God. life is on the line. What are you going to do? Like, no, I mean, it was, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Um, so for me, that was easy. The second one, I was, well, yeah, it's just kind of funny. I had the weirdest solutions to, like, every single episode. Because in the first one, I was like, human life, get the pig. I don't know why that's a sentence that makes sense. But the second one. Never thought I'd have sec- to say that on live television. But here we are. Yeah. Live yeah, right? radio, internet television. The second one. It's like, Matt, what do you do? Oh. It's like, well, do you do you love this woman? Yes. Does she love you? She might apply for the porn program. They They need guys. They have guys. Is there a way to apply? Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Tristan. That's the world they live in. What else are you going to do? I don't want to see her like this. Good. Then be there. <laughs> there were there were men in those videos. Yeah. He was a good-looking guy. He, I'm sure there's an application process. I don't think – I don't know how much you'd have to pay, but I don't think – I don't know why he had to pay $15 million just to put a – put a piece of glass to his fucking throat. Granted, beautiful moment I cried during that speech. Oh, yeah. During his speech, so, his first rant yeah. on the show, I was like, oh, my God. I I love the rant, but I'm sad, like, he didn't actually get out, like, you took the one thing that was real to me, like, do you remember her name? Do you even remember her name? Like, he kind of lost that piece, but... Well, they wouldn't have. Let's be real. Oh, no, by the way, true. my my favorite part of that entire episode, and I don't know, I guess it shouldn't be, but like my favorite part of that entire, the second episode, was the fucking Simon Cowell guy who just pauses for dramatic effect in every sentence. Oh, my gosh. Like, he would be, like, if he was a doctor, I cannot believe that you yeah. have a brain tumor. Like, just yeah. fucking pauses for everything. And I was like, this motherfucker. Because obviously the actor was doing it to be a parody of the whole thing. Right, and it just exactly. worked so well. <laughs> just like, I'm going to stop you right there. I cannot believe how good you are. I was like, these motherfuckers. Every time he did it. He did it in the promos that um, the main character saw while watching, you know, on his screen and everything. He did it fucking live twice. I was like, fuck this guy. So that fucking killed me. Just him doing it all the time. 
Uh, and then the yeah. third episode, I already told you my solution. Divorce or open marriage? It's the future, damn it. <clears throat> I'm surprised most of you aren't already there anyway. Yeah. Because it, it's just one of those things where, like, every – I have the weirdest – well, the third one, I don't think it's a weird solution. But the first two, I'm pretty sure people are like, apply for the program pretty outside the box there, Matt. It's like, well, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say there. If he's like, I love her, and, like, it's like, well, do you shame her for her profession? No. All right, then. Do you, do you want some good money? I, I'm assuming they pay the guys well, too. Right. Also, weird thing I would love to know about that episode, if they're even allowed to date. I mean, I really don't think she was treated well in that program. Well, she was not. She was drugged up. No, I mean, they had the they, the cup of, um, oh, God, well, co- compliance, yeah. literally. Compliance. Yeah, you no, know what? The funny thing not... was, I didn't even catch that the first time mm-hmm. when she said it. I didn't catch what she called it. And then the second time when he comes around, have you taken your compliance yet? I'm like, oh, fuck, that's why they fucking agree to this shit. Well, the thing is, it's not even a pun. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not even just compliance. It's like a pun because it's literally called cup pliance. I saw it written on the fucking oh, God, cup. Right. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. It's not like it's, I say drugged up. It's probably just alcohol, but the people who've never drank alcohol in their lives, clearly... You're going to get loopy mm-hmm. as shit. Yeah. I feel well, like it's more than just alcohol, though. Perhaps. But what I'm saying is, okay, if you've ever drank any yeah, I, sip of alcohol in your you life, yeah. and, you're, and they tell right, you to sip vodka. Hard. But I'm telling you, like, because I know you didn't drink for, for much of your, of your life, like mm-hmm. myself. But if so, you had a sip vodka out of nowhere, while probably being... Uh, I gotta be real. Looking at the way their lives are, probably being underfed. Yeah, true. You're gonna get loopy, and she got super loopy real quick when they were yeah. like, "Drink it and go out there." Although I love that he kept the cup, and I was like, "Why did he fucking do that?" It's like a memento. And then he said, "No, they already gave me some in the back," and I was like, "So he can be completely lucid throughout the entire thing." Yep. I was like, "God damn!" Also, by mm-hmm. the way. The end. That was the one thing. Yeah. What? Oh God. <laughs> no, but please tell me what you're gonna say. Um, that was actually the one thing that surprised me with that. I thought for sure that now I'm guessing they they might even have protection or there's glass in front of them or something. But for the 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 judges, I thought he was just gonna leap into the judges and just start stabbing. Yeah, me too. I thought he was gonna do like, something like that. The, you know, the guy on the left who was the, you know, the porn director. I thought he was yeah. just going to stab him. I really yeah. did. I was kind of sad he didn't. Same. At the same time, also kind of like, no, you know what? Good on you. You didn't stoop to that level. You're a better man than I, well, you <laughs> you were a better man than me up to a certain point. <laughs> I mean, I would stab him, but then I'd explain to everyone, listen. Look at the crowd right now. They're hot for this. Give me a 30-minute slot every week. Oh, my God. You're not just going to stab random people every week. No, not random people. Stitch him up. I'll just take him out every week. Oh, my God. 30-minute slot. Come on. I'll take him out every week. Come on. 30 minutes. Oh, and, and the guy on the fucking right would be like, you know what? That sounds like the best, worst, best, worst idea ever. <laughs> best idea I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, the crowd's confused. Woo! Woo! Yeah, right? No, but I think the end of the episode, when I first saw it, I was like, betrayer! Now... As someone who's a content creator, no, but now that I see it, oh no, God. no, but all jokes aside, right, now that I see it, it's just interesting because literally it, I mean, it says it right there in your face, but it's still something great to note. The idea of taking something that's so raw, so true, so, uh, so just real, and being able to yeah. commercialize that 
into 30 minute segments once a week on a fucking platform. True. Not like, you know, it's, and it's funny cause some people are going to be like, you have a gaming channel, Matthew. First of all, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's the First thing is, <laughs> yeah. Well, cause you know what it is too? I do that because I want to do that. It's a bit different than right. if there was some yeah. higher power that was like, let's market, let's take that and let's, change that up and let's because it was just such an interesting thing when you have the main character just saying all of this stuff like you just ring it out and you get a bunch of people in there and you just make it marketable and you just you know uh, water it down and things like that and then he gets that 30 minutes a week i mean he has a fucking cliffhanger he's like and i'm gonna do it until next week and i was like oh my god you motherfucker yeah. Like, especially the fact that, you know, he was like, it's not a gimmick. And he's basically turned it into a gimmick. Yeah. He can't just rant. He has to rant with the glass right at his throat. Like, I'm about to do it, man. That's how angry I am. Mm-hmm. And frankly, it's disturbing that they didn't have some show like that already on, on a network like that. Because there, yeah. cause I'd imagine there was some dissent among some people. Probably those wearing yellow. But, you know, I... Huh. I'd yeah. imagine there was some dissent from people wearing yellow. But, um, and that was another thing too, by the way, just taking the, this anti-fatness that already exists without our society, in our society and <laughs> revving that up in a world where they clearly, my opinion on that episode, they do not have resources to go around. Not, yeah. oh, they're, not they're trying to sap them for the 1%. Yes, there's a little bit of that as well, definitely. But I think that they truly, if they opened up the, everything to, to just people, like, oh, every, every one of you could have a building like that, I don't think they'd have enough food and shit like that to go around. So I think that's another reason why they're like, fuck it, let's just demonize people that are heavy. Literally, those video games, which I'm a guy that, again, yeah. it's like, Matt, you have a gaming channel. But I'm a guy... <laughs> But but well, the thing is, with those game like this, though. no, because there's a difference between. I mean, I will admit, yes, even certain, not all, but like certain first-person shooters, I felt weird about when I was younger because I'd be like, "Are we just only shooting the people that are brown?" Certain ones, not all, but like certain ones. I'm like, "What's going on here?" But in this case, right. it's not even about like like there is no war in their universe. There's like nothing to even talk about. Like there's no like military from the looks of it. I know we got like a smidgen. Yeah. But, like, all it is is just them going, shit, we need to, seemingly, we need to save our resources. We can't let people get fat. So, and they're clearly peddling to work for something. Granted, it could just be the resource thing and trying to keep them down by keeping them healthy in a way, but, quote, unquote, healthy. Because, again, they clearly don't get enough if they're only eating a fucking apple. That's not enough to survive on. So, yeah. Yeah, and then the sugary shit, if you, so if you go into the sugary shit, then what happens? Um, even though, yes, that can happen in our world, too, but you have the main character saying, yeah, if you eat that sugary stuff, there's a chemical in there that makes you want to eat more, and then you need to work it off more, but then you're hungrier because of the chemical, and then you want more, and then that's how people well, in that world can actually get overweight. Because yeah. they're not eating gourmet meals and fucking, you know, McDonald's every five fucking minutes. Yeah. Like you see what you see what they're eating and what they're subjected to in that you know in that episode. So it's just very interesting to see how that happens. And then if someone's overweight, all of a sudden, boom! Now you're put on the you're you're the janitor. Ha ha! You can't even work. Seemingly, you can't even work to get rid of that weight, which creates that cycle. Although there were some people who maybe have some great job. You know, like they also have a similar room uh, in that in a, you know in like those big suites if they appear on that show where they're degraded that we saw that right. one fucker watching that fucking asshole oh, fuck God, that guy yeah. yeah i literally <laughs> i mean i guess that was the point but literally every time you see him i'm just like fuck that guy you know that character is the personification of a fart like i just i just don't want to don't want to be around that Yep. And it, it doesn't matter how you even look or act. Like, it's just, there were other people that, like, they're even sitting there. They're like, look, I know we live in a world where we're allowed to kind of just throw out our prejudices against fat people, but, like, chill out, dude. Yeah. Like, like they have shows like that, so clearly people can act that way. But most of the people there were just like, look, man, I'm just trying to cycle in peace, shit. Yeah, right? Yeah. 
But no, but it seems like uh, I imagine they fucked up the world enough with like God knows what into the environment. So they were like, we need to scale things back. Like I have a strange feeling the air is not breathable. Possibly. Because you, yeah, you saw the vegetation. At the end, but it's just looking yes. out onto the glass. Although it's funny, you don't even know if it's real. Like that could be even fake. <laughs> No, no, no. To me, it looked real. Like, it just came off as like a, this is our world now. Look what we had to do. To, we still have to survive. We have to live here. But right. we have to, like, because you know how it is. Humanity, human beings, we adapt when needed. But that seemed like a, oh, God, we can't step outside. Because those, right. cause he was really high up. And so were, so was all of the vegetation. So why can't they go outside? The bird's fine. But, like, why can't they go outside? There's some shit. Yeah. There's something going on. Like, the soil is fucked. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. And they were, he was talking about, like, oh, what are we even powering? I do wonder if they actually help power things. Like, not just right. their own health, but, like, they're actually keeping shit going. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I feel like they probably are, but if it's anything that's actually helpful to people... That's, well, I'm yeah, not sure. <laughs> probably, probably the one percent. But still, because yeah, well, you saw right. them all on the cycles when he was like, "I just want something real," and he looks out and there's like multiple floors of people just on cycles. Right. So yeah, I like I like that concept too. It's just that because of the because of how depressing everything was, at least with the third one, I was like, "Oh, good, Whitaker and the kid are gone. Excellent." Like I was, I, that was a happy end for me. Yeah, because uh, mm. cause that's, the, that's the thing. It was, that's my problem with the third episode, actually, is the fact that I'm not saying that no woman ever has ever either cheated or slept with someone if, you know, if they had left the relationship. In fact, they did, I, although I have seen it happen with uh, men, though, not more so, but there's a quote from a famous man who, who did this once. He said the phrase, we were on a break. Oh... My God. You may have you may have heard of him. He had gel in his hair. Uh, he had a kid that was taken away from him due to anger issues. That was never confirmed, but you saw how Ross went over the fucking like threshold with Monica's oh, yeah. sandwich. And then and then we don't see Ben anymore. And it's like, hmm. Oh god. <laughs> I wonder why we don't see the kid. Fucking his, his Carol probably was like, Nope, not anymore. Not anymore, Ross. But seriously, though, all jokes aside, though, right? All jokes aside. <laughs> yeah. Even, like, they were, quote-unquote, on a break, although the joke that he made, the joke was the only good thing that he said throughout the entire episode, which was like, oh, after four days, you're a hero. After three is admirable, but four. Uh, yeah. I was like, that's actually a funny fucking joke. Because it was only five days, so she's just like, it's, it was five days. He's like, oh, so what, you fucked him out for the fourth day? Cause I was like, that's actually really funny. But right. other than that, though, everything that he did, the reason why the cheating thing was off for me in the episode, or the quote-unquote cheating, whatever you want to refer to it as, was off in the episode, was because it, kind, it makes it feel like, maybe I'm wrong, instead of it saying, because some could say, oh, it's just the fact that sometimes both sides can be quote-unquote wrong in a sense. But for me, it made it seem like what he did was justified. And then the end, it was just like, because if the end of the episode was truly, no, oh, haha. Ha. What? Yeah. No, like, yeah, at first it kind of makes it feel like, oh, you know, him acting this way is justified. But then it keeps going and it's like, no, no, it is not. Well, no, but the problem, because here's the thing, though. The problem is, is that they had him, like, go into the dude's house, assault him, get him yeah. to delete everything from his mind, from the chip, but, like, still. And then is when he noticed the damning evidence. Perhaps. Right. Maybe. He should have never done any of that. Oh, but he discovered the truth by doing that. And then that's the problem. I'm not saying we can't yeah. have conversations about stuff, but I don't ever want the conversation to be, and good thing he went in there, fucking hit the dude in the head over. Like, was the dude being a dick? Yeah, but not as much of a dick as the main character was trying to make it seem to be. Yeah. 
Like, I'm not saying he wasn't a dick at some points. I'm not saying he wasn't. Like, it was some. It was kind of odd what he said at the dinner table. I'll be real, right? right. Some of that shit. Yeah. A lot. But it's a bit. But it's one of those things where, like, it's just like he could have sneezed, and the main character was like, "Huh? Wow, sneezes like a guy who just fogs wives. What a dick." Like, what? Yeah. You good? Yeah, he just right. sneezed like an asshole. You know, that's how they they sneeze. It's like because it's one of those things where. You know, and look, I'm not saying that no one can ever be jealous. I'm not saying that no one has ever been jealous. Like, I've been jealous at times, right? That's, but here's the thing, too, I would like to admit as well. This guy, even though he didn't seem like he was super old, he was married to Whitaker's character for long enough that yeah. they actually had a baby. That's way too I mean, old to be like, to have that level of, what? I feel like they were probably in their early 30s, mid-30s, tops. Right. But that's what I'm trying to say. I don't think fits like I'm. I'm not saying oh, fits of jealousy no, like that but like with his age, the, like him getting that paranoid and jealous and like it's snowballing into this whole thing. Yeah, no, it's like, dude, act act your fucking age. Granted, I'm not saying at 18 he should have done any of this, but no, there. True. But there is there is no excuse. And heck, even the way he was sitting downstairs with the babysitter, he came off as a dude in his 40s or 50s. I was really confused. Right. I'm like, like, I don't know. Granted, yeah, it, I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't have the right to be upset. I mean, anyone would be, but acting it out the way that he did is still unacceptable. And I also, but here's the thing, too. The reason why I feel like it's weird to be upset is because, like, here's the thing, right? For me, it's weird to be upset. And he, let me explain. I think if, okay, so she originally lied. I mean, oh, it wasn't was, a week, like, it was a month. The more paranoid he got about it, the more he found out that she was lying about. Which, is, so which like, again, leads to my issue. It, should, it, it yeah. seems like it's a reward. True. Yeah. Yeah, which it, that's not. It shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. Now, again, some people could say, no, Matt, that's not what it was. It's just sometimes both parties can be wrong, one extremely more wrong than the other. If that's the yeah. case, fair. It's just that I feel like the end the end did not, to me, elicit – was supposed to elicit smiles like, hi, you fucked up, dude. It, I, it felt like it was cut and done in a way to be like, ah, oh, that dude lost everything, which is like, good. I'm happy he lost everything. Am I not supposed to be happy when he throws his wife on the bed? Yeah. Like, he threw his wife on the bed. Oh, she slept with another guy. Yeah, within that five-day period that he left over jealousy that may or may not. Now, granted, after this situation, maybe you'd go, well, maybe that was understandable jealousy, perhaps. But still, I I just think that it was it was odd to have it happen that way. And then... Granted, I will admit, yes, that could potentially not be his baby. Okay, I understand why you'd be upset. That's why he was asking about the condom, perhaps, not just because of... Uh, granted, I'm sure that dude probably had a bunch of fucking diseases, but still, uh, yes, he was, let's be real, probably does. But even putting that aside, it, I still think that... Um, I still think that it was... Uh, it, it was strange that he was that intense about it. Granted, I do think that perhaps you could say the last scene, you know, him walking around the house led to his final decision more so, which I think was a a beautiful decision. I enjoy that theme in the episode, which is get these fucking things out of your body. Right. Because they're only going to bring you pain and suffering. Yeah. There is no, this, the only thing that can come out of that, that is, a person with anxiety's best friend and worst enemy. Yeah. Because well, either you find your remote. Best friend. But the problem, because <laughs> here's the thing. The reason why, dude, I've been losing way too many remotes recently. I found them, but my <laughs> God, I would have saved time if I just fucking could click a button. However, the yeah. reason why I say this is because I would be replaying moments, thinking, oh, God, how badly did I fuck that up? And then seeing how badly I fucked it up with such clarity. Is, right. You could zoom in. I was like, all right, that's – I didn't realize your brain could even fucking do that. I know it's a chip implanted as well, but, like, it should be using your brain. I guess it's like a high-tech camera and using your eyes, perhaps. 
Um, yeah. But still, like it's not just a record and playback thing. It actually is a camera in and of itself. Right. Because I don't think – I don't know. I don't think your normal brain, if you could you know, push a button connected to your brain, it could actually zoom in. Like, granted, I guess it uses not just the camera, but also it uses it thinks of it as a screenshot. Which, yes, if you're if you consider your vision as a screenshot, arguably you could zoom in with the right tech. But either way, still, what I'm getting at here is, it's I would completely fuck up with it because I would have to consistently think that I screw this up. Was I wrong here? Is this the problem? What happened? Right. That's the one thing. Two, it would be wonderful because I would use it in one way that he used it, which would be the best way to ever use it. Shit, I know that person, don't I? What the fuck was her name? <laughs> That's, yeah, and then he sure. went back, remembered the wedding, and then came up and he's like, hi, we've met before at the wedding? And she didn't remember because she didn't see him and have the time to go in her memory banks. Too fucking bad, loser. Prep better. Oh, my and God. I, sorry, you want to you wanna prep? You want to do the dude? I would walk in there prepping everybody's name like minutes before. Oh, who's coming? True. Tony, Jan, Sarah, Samantha, and Billy. Oh, I, I, I. Wh- all right, click. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right, all right. Awesome. You at the wedding. You at the funeral. I'm sorry. You at the wedding. You at the funeral. You at. The- <laughs> Got them all. Boom. Um, oh, by the way, that dude, by the way, speaking of the main character of that episode, even before any of the horrifying shit that he did with, you know, the, the bottle and the drunk driving, which, by the way, you want your fuck, you want any kind of job. Do not fucking drunk drive in a world yeah. where you have your own evidence, you dick. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously that makes me... not thinking at that point, but yeah, still. I don't, I don't care how drunk I'd be like. Oh, I'm taking a fucking cab to this jick's house. Like, yeah. I'm just saying, like, he seems like he was well off. Take a cab, jackass. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, but still, uh, when I was, um, what I was, I don't remember what I was trying to say. Uh, I think that just pissed me off is what I was trying to get at. But uh, that was one thing that, that pissed me off overall, just the fact that it's like you dumbass, you're drunk driving with with cameras in your fucking head. Cool. Um, but, oh, right, I remember it. The, the, the point when, and I'm just going to quote him. I don't like saying this word, but I'm going to quote him. How he lost every single argument that he would ever have with her again, even uh, before doing anything that he did. Of the episode. <laughs> Not the beginning, but like 20 minutes in, I believe. Yeah. He said the phrase, sometimes you're a bitch. Right. And she cut off the sometimes. By the way, as if that makes it any better. Like, his fucking... When he said that alone, like, you can't just cut off sometimes, I was like, divorce his ass. <laughs> yeah. No, because, like, you can say sometimes you're a piece of shit. And I'd be like, okay. But, like, specifically be like, sometimes you're me. And then be acting like he's the ma- like he's not a fucking child at that point. But still, hear me out, though, Tristan. He's lost right. every single argument ever. Because he could yeah. – if, if, if they had worked everything out midway, fucking five years later, he's looking at her. Sweetie, did you forget my birthday? She clicks a button. You're a bitch. <laughs> like, he exactly. would lose yeah. every argument. Every argument. Oh, yeah. This is – this is my mom's funeral. Click. You're a bitch. Every single. <laughs> especially, yeah, especially with how everything, like if they had YouTube and Twitter in that world, it would become a fucking, like a remix. You, 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 you're a, you're a, like it would just be oh online everywhere. Be like, she, right. He'd be like, did you really do that? She's like, what? It just, it must have, uh, someone must have seen me playing it. I don't know. I just, and now it's – oh, I would like to mention something about the first episode, Tristan. I'll say okay. something. So I know what part of the episode I should really be frustrated with and the parts that should really upset me. But as someone who makes YouTube videos, the fact that when the first video came up and they didn't edit out some of what she said, I felt like it was kind of lazy. As someone – who edits his own videos and puts them online. I felt like they could have done a little bit better. I'm just saying. Uh, which, In the first episode, 
in the first episode when they released the first video and they ha- and she's like excuse me and like in the beginning parts of it it's just like read the whole statement i'm like you could have just cut that out for efficiency but whatever hashtag lazy <laughs> as someone who edits his own videos tristan i put a lot of work into the videos that i put on our youtube channels and these guys just released this video with no editing whatsoever, terrible lighting, no green screen. I don't know. I'm just saying that I'm trying to make memories here. And it Ron seems like they Steven, just wanted to do this are one you and fucking kidding they... me. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I the actor like when they got the response, it's like Rod seamless, are you fucking kidding me? Oh yeah, that killed me. Because he's just like, all right, guys, let's stop it. This is all a funny joke. Is that a finger? Oh, the finger was interesting to me. Although, it's so... Okay, rewatching this, or even watching it... Actually, I'm sorry. Watching it at the time, my thought was, could they not have noticed that it was a guy's finger? But now rewatching it, I'm like, everything happened so fucking fast. Oh, yeah. They weren't. And they only had until, like, 4 p.m. that day, too. And they're already fucking panicking. Yeah, no, all they knew... understandable. (laughs) Understandable, yeah. So all they knew, they just kind of sat back. What was that? Understandably panicking the fuck. (laughs) Yes. So literally all they sat back and had seen was just, hey, this is a finger and there's some nail polish on it, and the ring is there. That's clearly her ring. She's lost a finger. Right. But But it was quite interesting how... It was quite interesting how we then learned that it's his finger, the terrorist's finger, later on. And I think that was interesting because he literally just wanted to make a statement. He wasn't ever going to hurt her. He let her go at 3.30. Yeah, but... Well, no, but I'm saying I don't think think he would have killed her even. Like, I think he was just like... We're going to make – like he kidnapped a princess because he knows that a po- the prime minister, a politician, isn't going to sit there and be like, oh, come on. You can still worship a dead princess. He wasn't going to say – he wasn't going to – he was going to do anything he can within his power. Yeah. By the way, I love the queen. Do, any, do anything within your power to save her. Do you want me to fuck a pig? Anything <laughs> – Within your power. Your power. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> the queen slides into the darkness like she's on a fucking, um, oh God, what, what were they? I forgot what they called them. They're, they're like, they're not, not a skateboard. I don't know what it's called. It's like small. Uh, there's two wheels. It's not a skateboard, but I forgot what it is. Oh, a Segway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But without the actual, you know, like the 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 thing to hold on to it. Like she just kind of just goes back into the darkness, but we don't see that she's on a Segway. Or the queen has heels. Right. I don't know. This is the future. So oh, anyway, uh, well, actually, I should say the most interesting interesting thing about this show. So I, when I first started watching it, I didn't know it was an anthology series. Then when I saw the second one, I was like, wait, what? And I looked it up and I found out that it was just that. And what I think is interesting is the first episode is not seemingly not a futuristic world. Now, some might say in 2011, the green screening process would be like that's that is a little bit out of touch, like at the time, like people can green screen stuff live. But to make it look that real, that's I don't know about that. Right now, deep fakes exist. Do you know what a deep fake is? Uh, I do not. Okay, this is not, I'm not kidding, this is 100% true. You could film the both of us in a shot together, like on our YouTube channel, and if the angle is just right and the lighting is just right, you can get someone who's good with certain types of software to replace each other's heads on each other's bodies. And if it's done just right, just right, it'll look 100% real. Or not 100%, I shouldn't say that, but like 80 to 90% if the lighting is correct. Sometimes you look like a fucking monstrosity, and it's just horrifying, and it's just not right. But like other times, it could just be a right. thing where it could, where it could look a, like really good. You know, and some people do stuff like that, of course, with like funny memed pictures where they just take a, you know, two pictures and they just swap faces. 
I mean, hell, there's face swapping apps. Right. But I'm talking about like yeah. dedicated frame by frame programs that you still have to work and and you know and retouch and things like that. But like people have taken, I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, we were talking about Key and Peel sort of on an episode of Kikaku Corner, which will be coming out. Well, actually, the episodes, the clips might have already come out, actually. Uh, but still, as of this recording, once this is out. But anyway, uh, the point, though, is, Tristan, is that in uh, – I'm pretty sure Jordan Peele, who does a really good Obama impression, they had him record an Obama speech. Like, just pretend that Obama said, like, the N-word, just slipped it in, jokingly. Right. And someone took footage of Obama – and using deep fake technology, I don't know the actual names of the programs, but using those programs made it seem like Obama actually was giving a presidential speech where he just slipped in the N-word. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. Now, again, it takes a lot of time. Sometimes the lighting is shit, so it never – it doesn't look too good. Like, you can tell right. in some – I want to send you some deep fakes. The problem is most people use them for adult film. I wonder why, Internet – so I don't uh, feel comfortable sending that to you. Uh, I, right. I'm like, I, I can't find a normal deep fake. Like, but I'll send you that video in particular of the one with Peel and whoever did the CG alongside the Obama speech. I'll send you that one, and you'll be like, oh, God, it's not 100% there, but it's a thing. So it's right. interesting that in this show that came out in 2011, even though, of course, green screen was a thing, no shit, and you could green screen people live. You could do that on, o on OBS, you know, open broadcast software, but – uh, right. It was still interesting that now that technology has become so perfected, or perfected, but gotten so much better, that someone could technically do shit like that much easier. Where in that case, it could seem like that's like a futuristic -y world. Like, oh, it's in the present most of the, you know, mostly because they have a princess, prime minister, Twitter, YouTube. But that aspect, some people could be like, oh, that's crazy. Now it's like people are doing it. Right. So, yeah. Um, but I'm saying that what I wanted to start off with was it's interesting how that is set in the present, and then you see episode two, and it's just like, what hellscape are we in? Yeah. And then episode three, and it's like, hmm, like seeing everything normal, but then you see the eye thing. One of these things is not like the other. Yeah. So – isn't it? So I think it's actually very interesting how, even though in some ways they take, you know, normal, quote unquote normal, like, you know, they don't like go crazy. Like, because the thing with Twilight Zone, like we mentioned earlier, it'd be like, here is the devil. Or, hey, I'm just walking through Fifth Avenue. That's a dinosaur. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So, and then the entire episode is like, why are the dinosaurs here? And the guy finds out he's just a fucking toy or something. So, you know. That's that's kind of the Twilight Zone. In this case, it's nice that like none of them were like, wait a minute, am I an emissary of the devil? It's like, no, you're just so happy, uh, but everything's sad now. But everything is sad now. <laughs> wait, wasn't that actually the theme for all three episodes at the end? No, you're just some dude, but everything's sad now. Wasn't that like the theme? Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the. I'm pretty sure that's what they wrote in the script as like the final act. Just some dude. Yeah, that sounds everything's right. sad now. Um, but seriously though, seriously though, I do like that the first one was so vastly different. Like, granted, the pig stuff. Yes, I admit the pig stuff, but <laughs> it was so. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that that was normal. But in terms of the setting, not saying it's that like, wasn't fucking weird because it was. Yeah. But no, it definitely, no, it definitely I mean, is something that made people that probably felt, not watch. It's true. Well, I mean, hell, it didn't stop everybody else in the show from watching, for fuck's sake. Well, because there. I know it hmm, didn't show, funny. but like. No, 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 no. Like, my thought is, no, 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 my thought is like, well, I've made enough Australia jokes with Mad Max, so I'll just make this joke here. Well, that's Britain for you. Yuck, yuck. I mean, I did that. Oh that's goodness. just a typical day. They were only watching the, they were just watching the standard 4 p.m. telly program, Man Fuck Pig. Um, very liberal over I there mean, with what's on television. I feel like your mother is a cow is more of a French insult, but, like, I mean, maybe that's just me. Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm getting word from a producer who is me that we've been canceled. All right. I'm pretty sure that's what did it. We've pissed off everybody. 
Okay. Are you no, sure? But... <laughs> yeah. Please, let's not go down that road. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Goblin Slayer fans. Let's talk to Goblin Slayer fans right now. Y'all are degenerates. Anyway, um, we've done it. We've pissed off everybody. Y'all are degenerates. We've done it. We've pissed off everybody. Oh, um, yeah. No, but but uh, all jokes aside, though, which is weird because that's just kind of what we do here. Yeah. Uh, no, but seriously, everyone did watch in that in that episode for obvious reasons. Um, although there are some people that were conscientious, like they were like, I don't know about this. Like that one woman who works at the hospital that was like, we heal people here, John. Why are we watching this man become broken? Yeah, right. Exactly. So I should, another thing I should mention too, that also confused me and I, and I don't know why. I mean, look, I've, I've never thought about like the, the intricacies of fucking a pig. But when they talk about, oh, God, it's been going for an hour, I'm like, that guy lasted an hour? I mean, oh. I, I was, that's my thought. I was like, I'm not saying he should – the psychologist said don't be too eager, but like an hour? Yeah. Like, like no, because like, I, I don't know. Maybe it did say go for an hour. I don't remember what the actual like instructions were. But I, I'm pretty sure like – 30 minutes in, I I'm like, remember, how much pig yeah. fucking is enough pig fucking? Like, if I'm in that situation, I'm like, all right, guys, how much is enough? Let's yeah. see. Also, another thing, too, the fact that his wife, it's very strange, the wife situation. I think, I don't think the episode said that he cheated on her before. And that's why, although I maybe. No. Mm. No, less she seemed. Thing. There was no, like, talk of his background political life or, you know, even his personal life. Well, I think I think in a way that was good. Yeah. For everything that he went through, he didn't seem like he deserved what happened. Like, it didn't seem like he was a corrupt politician or that he cheated on his wife or that he was, you know, brought up on, like, like if he was a, a rapist that never, you know, got brought up on charges or something like that. It was just this guy trying to make a point, make a statement. And Which like, I think are is... Are you fucking kidding me? But I have to say, though, in a weird way, I like that. Because the worst thing... Not the worst, because, you know, in sometimes, sometimes when it happens in anime, I'm okay with it. But just this idea of, like, let's hear about either a tragic backstory or, like, the reason why he's, you know, Hitler reincarnated. And then you do that, and it makes you go good for him that he's doing this or the opposite like poor guy in this case it's kind of like oh my god what even like why is this even happening like i like that we were yeah. thrown into a state of confusion rather than laying I mean, everything out on the table yeah well cuz I mean, i'm I not going to lie when i when all that went down i'm like he's probably going to kill himself after all this and then when he's like oh he's making his next tour i'm like what what He's making his next – he's making his first ever appearance, going to shoot himself in the fucking face. Like, Jesus. I mean, like, after what happened. After what happened, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sorry. That, I should, I should, I should say this. Mental state. Tristan, I should say this. We're talking about this from an American perspective. They don't have guns over there that, that readily available. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so, ooh. Here's something that I also found interesting. I'm not saying this was a political statement, but it was interesting to see in the episode as well. They mentioned terrorism, and they were like, hey, don't mention that right off the bat, because it seemed like perhaps the news media, like it does in the U.S. from what I've seen, not every single piece of news that I see, but sometimes I see if some terrorist attack happens of some type, immediately they say, oh, it's terrorism, but they specify all of the terrorist organizations that – normally recruit people of a certain skin tone. Right. So no one ever says, oh, is, was, that, was that the KKK? Nobody says that. 
they say was that yeah. ISIS was that was that you know ISIL you know different different pronunciation was that ISIS ISIL was that Al Qaeda who what terrorists and then all it takes is like one dude to be like I'm with one of those if not every one and the media is like well I guess he's with every terrorist organization. In this case right. though, you saw them kind of being like whoa hey it might not be terrorists but in that way and then interestingly enough and again I'm not saying this is a political statement it's just interesting to see the terrorist was just some white dude who <clears throat> might have worked in like a steel mill or something. Yeah. Because you know, when we saw the dude at the end, he was not praising Allah. He was not going back to the Middle East. He was just some dude who hung himself. Right. He was just some white dude who hung himself. I say white from a U.S. perspective. I don't know, you know, what his nationality was, but still, I'm saying you see what I'm saying, though, Tristan. Like it wasn't some. It wasn't like he was. Because I think an American version of this. I'm not saying he would be brown, but he would definitely be like some kind of like the prime minister would be like, give me a gun. I'm going in to the pig. No, uh-huh. to to his insides. That still sounds like you're having sex with him, sir. No, I'm killing uh-huh. him. And then runs. And then, you know, runs to like the American perspective is give me the guns. We're going in. Although the Japanese perspective is somewhat similar. Do you remember the president in Metal Wolf Chaos? Oh, God. <laughs> Mr. President. By the way, that's coming to the PS4. So I need to buy it. Metal Wolf Chaos. I, it's coming in English. <laughs> Right. It's being released here officially. It was never released in the U.S. That video game. It was full yeah, English dialogue. I've seen the trailer. But it was never. Yeah, beautiful game. Anyway, yeah, it was never putting, released here. Yeah. Yeah, putting that aside for a second. Usually, the American perspective is, "Give me the guns." You know, I'm going in. I'm going to destroy that, etc., 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 etc. In this case, it was just like, how do we avoid it politically? How do I politically not fuck that pig? And then, yeah. <laughs> how do we politically avoid this? Um, and then also the fact that, again, it's not like it was about taking down some big terrorist organization. It was just one sick, sick, sick dude who wanted to make a point, which for all I know, it could have been a point about fucking taxes. Like, we're getting fucked, you know, or something right. like that. If he's yeah. fucking us, then we're going to get him back. He's going to fuck us the way he's fucking us. Like, I don't know. Like, he could have been something along those lines. But the second it was a pig... I, this is what I'm trying to get at because I couldn't remember the exact scene. Immediately they were talking about, oh, is this related to like you know a Muslim thing, like worshiping the pit, like oh, yeah. Oh, they did, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. The second something like that happens, like it's you know, is it is it about worshiping the pit? like as if it's like a you know a religious or some kind of um, like taking religion and terrorism, and bringing them together. Uh, it was right. interesting to see how it was just some dude who was just off. Like, not every yeah. act that is considered terrorism has to be something that comes from a place that some people say is someone else's wrong religion. It could right. just be some dude who's just fucking weird. Right. And it was a small thing, but it was just something interesting to see as well. Because, again, coming at this from an American media perspective, you don't know where they were going to go with that. Right. Like. I was. It got to the point where I stopped even thinking of the terrorist. I was like, "Oh right, yes, he he's the one who orchestrated all of this." Dear God. Like I was thinking more of the fact that this is happening. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, oh, I brought up earlier the wife, and you were talking about like can't look her, can't look him in the eye, things like that. Well, two things. First of all, she did not need to watch the program. She was sitting there watching it. Don't watch that if you ever want to have sex with your husband again. And secondly, mm-hmm. your husband is a hero. He saved a yeah. princess. You don't have to sex him, but don't act repulsed when you're in the house. Like, oh, I can't even touch you. Well, then guess what, sweetie? She would have died. I'm talking about like from his perspective, not just calling a random woman yeah. sweetie. Guess what, sweetie? She would have died. Do you want her to die? Is that what this is all about? Then here's the knife. Kill her. No, she's pregnant with a baby. Exactly. Well, no, I think she had the kid already, but still, it's like, exactly. So shut up. We we saved a family. We saved a family. I'm sorry. I Granted, I'm not saying she should, like, be ready to, like, pounce on him. Uh, no. Yeah. Like, no. I mean, uh, but still. Yeah. It was just, is your cat okay? I think that's what... Father, yeah, my cat's asleep. Oh, okay. More, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, you just, you. Can, I don't think you can expect everyone to be able to handle that. 
No, 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 no. Again, <laughs> I'm not saying that they shouldn't also be considering divorce. I'm just saying that if the voters enjoy it, I mean, he's gone up in the polls 3%. If the voters can take it, I think she can too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's... But again, Granted, I'm not saying that she... don't have to look him in the eye every day either. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Because I was thinking, some of them might still have the footage. But no, you're right. They don't. Um, I... I mean, that oh, was the other point when his cabinet, hmm. uh, you know, her, uh, his advisor was like, so we're going to make it a criminal offense if anyone has, you know, footage of this. Just... <laughs> He doesn't say anything that entire car trip. I just, like, wanted him to look over. It's like, I know you're saying all this to make me feel better. But there's absolutely nothing you can say right now that will make me feel better. And she's like, I know. I'm kind of more doing it for myself at this point. I hope you, you know what confuses. You know what confuses me royally? The fact that she says it and it's talked about in the broadcast as if if they didn't say it, people would be like, oh, yeah, I'll like all that other bestiality that's legal, right? <laughs> that's not yeah. legal. It's illegal in many places. Right. I'm, I would assume that it would be illegal. Irreg- like, like, I don't know what the thought would be. Well, like, well, well it's, then, it's illegal unless you're thing. talking about it via the lens of public record. In which case, because he's a politician. Oh yeah, right. Or like, that's the other thing. It's like, okay, uh, you know, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, I know you had to do that to, you know, save the princess and all, but um, you did you did commit a crime and you publicly broadcasted it. Um, we uh, we gotta we gotta uh, um, the justice system requires us to uh, charge you on uh, well that. <laughs> I, I don't know who runs the uh, like the airwaves in the UK. Like what public what public service? Because it's on the BBC, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, they had okay. other news stations in the episode, but oh no 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 not like not like that. I mean, like who says like this is like who would arrest him? Him, oh. not the government, but or who would find him or find the station that aired it? Right. I don't know. All I'm saying is the FCC made a call and said never call us prudes again and hung up. <laughs> the American <laughs> FCC yeah. was like, "You never make fun of us again. Good night." Click. I think that was the moment they were like, "What are they showing over there? What?" <laughs> Oh, God. What is going on right now? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is going on over there right now? Do not turn the on F- that television. The FCC is just like, oh, God, just even if they aired her murder, it's kind of okay as long as there's no nudity. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of accurate. Oh, God. You've seen what's on television, Tristan, but no nudity. I know, I know. Ooh, no nudity, ooh. But The Walking Dead, perfectly acceptable. Yeah, uh, perfectly acceptable. But Put no on nudity. daytime television. Get the kids to watch. Family fun hour. Wait a minute, okay, is that a boob? <laughs> is that a boob? No, oh. cut it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, is that a nipple? <laughs> Show is canned within like 10 seconds. Show is completely canned. Anyway, so, like we are, I'm pretty sure this isn't even airing. Pretty sure we just, the feed has been cut. Um, yeah, pretty much. We're just oh, talking to ourselves in a bubble at this point. Pretty much. It is the future. It is an episode of Black Mirror. So, no. I, I would no. like to say something. No. Uh-huh. Wasn't it interesting? Granted, it made me mad only because of how, ups- like, because this happened in the episode, I just wanted to, like, shake someone, whoever fucking came up with the idea. But I do enjoy that they also took a jab at the fact that you're trying to do something in secret. You get this porn star in here, and what happens? A fan or some TMZ-like dude takes a picture, puts yeah. it on Twitter. Now the terrorist knows about it because it's also gone viral. Right. That was also interesting. Granted, I only hated that because I'm like, they will put towels on professional wrestlers' heads when trying to sneak them into the event to do a cameo. 
Right. But this is about the life of a goddamn princess, and nobody puts a yeah. fucking hoodie on this dude? Yeah, right. But still. But in terms of the theme, like, I think it was very interesting because, yeah, you can't have secrets anymore. You really can't. Why do they put the towels on those professional wrestlers' heads who are doing cameos at, like, the Royal Rumble or something like that? Because if one person sees them in a parking lot, everybody right. knows about it 30 minutes before it sh- or even earlier in the day, if they're being snuck in the middle of the day before the show even happened. So you'd hear all these rumors. So funnily enough, weird transition, but still somewhat, like, it still happens. If they're trying to have a wrestler cameo who hasn't shown up in, like, six months or a year or even like five years, ten years, something crazy like that, they'll put a towel over their head. They'll say, okay, the show, the the cameo will be at like 9.30. They'll be bringing him or her, them in at like 9.15. Where even other wrestlers who work in the company will see him or her or them, whatever, walking backstage and be like, I didn't know you were here today. (laughs) Like, it isn't just the fans who are getting shocked. It's other pro wrestlers who, you know, have been longtime fans who are like, oh, shit, Jerry's here today. I didn't know John would be here. I didn't know Chris would be here. Well, fuck. Right. And they're getting yeah. shocked and surprised at the same time, that the, <laughs> around the same time that the fans are, as, you know, the wrestler is coming down the ramp, especially there's some wrestlers sitting in a locker room watching the show on television in their locker room, like at the stadium. But they're watching the show. They see the wrestler coming down the ramp, and they're like, Nobody told me that Sam would be here. I now see him. He's like 20 feet away from me. Walking down the ramp live on Monday Night Raw. So you put a fucking hoodie over a wrestler. But when it comes to the princess's life, whatever. Yeah. Just just bring him in. Just bring him in. Who He'll fucking cares? He'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something no that I... No one knows yeah. this guy. He does only pork. Oh crap! Professional. <laughs> he no. It's he was. He's, he even made the. He even made it seem like he was a big deal. I'm not saying he was like right. their Ron Jeremy, but like he was clearly big enough that like he wasn't just some random dude who also started a. No, like he was a. He, he was big enough that apparently some dude was like, "Hey, I know you." And it's like, right. God damn it, God damn it. Um. So that pissed me off. Just a little bit. I was like, really? Like, we should we should probably. Uh, another thing that got me a little, like, it was, it, it took me out of the episode. This is episode two. It took me out. But the speech drew me back in. Tell me what you feel about this. The fact that our main character in the second episode was able to just get a piece of glass from his room that's constantly monitoring him. Yeah, that was interesting. I'm surprised. I thought they were just going to come in and take him out right then and there because he destroyed half the room. And I feel like the society that they're in is like, how dare you do this? They would, you know, yeah, he would be moved to another facility or something like that. Yeah, no. Like, it's, it was extremely confusing to me because, granted, his speech really drew me in. And I was like, honestly, that makes up for everything that like that what that makes up for that moment completely. I mean, his eyes were so red; it felt like he actually truly believed it, yeah. and it just it was just so powerful. But yeah, in a society, I mean, he closes his eyes and like a YouTube video. Please, or no, it's like a Facebook video. Uh, because here's a, here's a funny thing, Tristan. So YouTube, yeah. if you have an ad playing, you can go to another tab. If you're watching this on your computer, you can go to another tab and let it play just fine. If you're on Facebook and an ad is playing and you're like, oh, my God, I just wanted to watch this, like, three-minute video and now there's an ad playing. If you go to another tab, the ad will stop. Right. You have to go back to the tab to have the ad playing. I don't like watching ads on I don't like watching videos on Facebook. Yeah. That's yeah. why. But still, that's and it's funny because that Facebook, you know, ad feature that came after Black Mirror. Yeah. And it's just so interesting how it's just like, oh, I'm not looking at the ad. Well, I mean, your life is filled with ads now. And it's like you guys are such dicks. And also living living in a room that small, I'm like, yeah, it seems like a gentrified apartment in Brooklyn. 
you cut up like yeah. a, an entire apartment that could house, you know, only four people, three people, and you turn that into a fucking 18 person home, cutting up every single one into a sliver of a room, like you're slicing up a small pizza, pie, like a really small pie of pizza into really fucking tiny slices. Right. Like I looked at that, I was like, the only difference is some of the gentrified apartments that I've seen in Brooklyn don't have giant TVs on every wall that move with you, which is also creepy. Like that was it. I was like, well, also something else I should mention. Again, I with the society they live in, I guess I understand why he immediately did this. But he did the Batman syndrome. Do you know the Batman syndrome? Uh, it's something prevalent yeah. in, in Batman movies. Uh, basically, Batman meets Pretty Woman. Hey, uh, I'm Bruce Wayne. Here, he meets, and our main character in the second episode meets a pretty woman. He's like, hey, uh, do you want my 12 million credits? It's nice to help yeah. her out, don't get me wrong. But she could have right. just bought shit. Yeah. Like, she could have just been like, why do I have to ever interact with this asshole? Ever? Granted, he's not, but from her perspective, if she was a bad person, why do I have to ever interact with him? I have 12 million credits. He can't make me give it back, and I can pay for a better room. Right. So I know the episode had to happen, and I'm happy. And granted, she was very innocent, which is sad because later. But still. Yeah. Yeah. No, that killed me inside. Yeah. Also, the fact that he had to watch that ad, I was like, oh, oh, if I died right here, I'd be happy. Right, yeah. Like, I need to to leave this mortal coil for a bit. I just... Right, exactly. And that's what made me feel the worst about the ending, is because he gives into it as well. Yes, I just think it's, it's a good... I feel worse that he could never meet her again or something. For me, that's the whole thing. I was like, also, something that I find, like, really funny is just the fact that, like, uh, the other the other girl, the one that, like, was into him, which, by the way, why was he not into her? She was cute. But still, yeah, yeah, uh, that kind of made me sad. And, like, even when he was like, oh, there's a trick to it, it's like, you only know that because she showed it to you, you jackass. Yeah, I will admit, that was another thing, too. I was like... That's a dick move. I don't want to think you're a and, dick. Like, I'm not saying... You're doing nice you things. Know, I'm, the whole idea, like, oh, someone has feelings for you. Well, I mean, you know, that doesn't have to mean that you have to have feelings for them back. No, but, like, I don't know. It was more when he did the trick, too. I'm like, really? You're not even going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, she showed me. No. Thank you. That's like, exactly oh, what I would do. I, I, I did that. Like, no, you did not. That is exactly what I would do. I'd be like, oh, yeah, she showed it to me. Oh, who is she? Oh, she's someone that I that I kind of know. Anyway, let's move over here. Like, I'm not saying I'd do a full-on introduction for someone I had just met. But, like... Yeah, but, you know, something. Oh, something. But anyway, here's the thing, though. I loved her reactions, though, to everything going on over time. Not originally. Originally, I was sad. But then as it goes on, where she's just like... Oh, she's performing? Really? That stupid good yeah. singer? She's actually really good at singing. Damn. <laughs> yeah. And then and and then afterwards where it's just like, Oh my god, it's him. He's dancing. Oh god, he has a piece of glass to his throat. Right. Like it was just interesting seeing her reactions as everything went on. Yeah. But um oh, and I fucking lost it. At like, like I hated the the ads playing only because I also have to like watch this. So I'm like, I don't want my neighbors to think I'm I'm watching something that isn't this. Um, but but the funniest thing about them was just like he's sitting there and he's just trying to get rid of the ads. He has enough money to get rid of the ads, and then all of a sudden he's just like, you know what? Why not? And then you and then clicks the yes, seemingly clicks the yes, and I was like, that's funny. Because he's just sitting there, he's just like, screw this, screw this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. But what are you? What else are you going to do with that? I was like, you know what, fuck it, sure, click. And I was like, that's funny. Because then, uh, fucking ten minutes later, hello returning user in the fucking bathroom getting an ad because there's a screen in front yeah. of him. 
I was like, that is such a dick move, and it's so funny. Because he's talking to a woman in the bathroom, which I have to admit, oh, I do God, like that yeah. it's... It is nice that it's gender-neutral bathrooms, especially because, again, they don't have the resources to fucking do anything else. So at least it's nice that they, you know, you, they, it's, you, it is equality in that one respect. But, uh, but it's still funny because he's talking to her in the bathroom. And then, hello, returning user. And they both are just like, yeah, so, yeah. She's gonna, she's gonna leave. So that, that to me, it was funny, and it's just so sad that it turned on me later. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, the third episode. There was actually talks that Robert Downey Jr. was interested in turning it into a movie. The. Oh. The third the, episode. Yeah. Yeah. With the, cause that's history. that's oh, a, that. That's an interesting concept to be in a to be in a movie. The oh, problem yeah. is it'd be. It would be if it was an American movie. It'd just be like Mr. President. No, uh, it would be. It would be interesting though to see where they could take it. An American sci-fi movie. Sure. Yeah, but um, but yeah. So, I uh, anything else you want to say about this before we wrap this up? Um, I guess. Oh, um, I know earlier you had asked me. I don't know if I actually ever gave the answer which episode, like, got me the worst. Yeah, which got you the worst, and which one did you enjoy? Uh, it's fun, like, I, which one did you enjoy? The most. You it was the strong one. <laughs> well, the concepts, I think, were oh, enjoyable oh, yeah, that, well, on their own. Um, yeah. No, it was definitely, like, it's a great show. It's well-written, and they have good concepts. Um, But that's the thing. Like, I don't know what definitively makes me... Like, because you've talked about it kind of parallels to, like, Twilight Zone and stuff like that, and I love that. I'm like, so why don't I love this? I don't know. (laughs) But no, but the thing is, I think you're I think you're looking at this a bit too rigidly. If if like I don't expect if you say, you know what, episode one was actually my favorite, I'm like I'm not gonna sit here and actually say without a shadow like without any kind of joking whatsoever, like, so you like the pigs, huh? Like I'm not gonna fucking you clearly like the fact that social media was used in a way that could actually not only, you know, mirror our lives, but also show how it can be a problem because literally right. any kind of cover up that would have worked could have was completely ruined by the fact that social media exists also i forgot my because i I remember earlier way earlier i said oh here's what i would do you know to solve the first episode so i did it for every episode what i would have done if it was me in that situation i would have done everything i would have saved a life and because you know the guy's dead or this no terrorist it seems like we're good i just tell everyone that it was fake Hey, but you did that. Yeah, nope, CG. Really cool things going on nowadays. Anyway, but granted, he got three <laughs> percent more in the polls. So frankly, he probably he was probably milking that. He's probably like, my name is John Pigfucker McGee, and I, I saved mean, that I woman's don't think life. He was. <clears throat> I think he. I think he probably tried to sweep that under the rug as much as he fucking possibly could. I'm John Saved a Princess like, McGee. There's like a little girl. Yeah, exactly. How did you save her? Get in the car. And so, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So I I, am I know legally it's just, not allowed to discuss that. Nor do I want. To. I love that legally. I cannot discuss that with you because of your age and actually to anyone really <laughs> legally because your age, our location. And yes, <laughs> the act. Yes, and just because yes, because right. No, but no, but <laughs> but I say but I say enjoy in terms of like looking at the concepts of either social media, which I will admit, if the pig thing wasn't there, you could consider it lacking, but only due to the fact that how crazy social media is now. So that's just the thing that maybe hasn't aged well. The second one, I mean, this idea of the world becoming, like, not even that it's just used to sexuality. It's that sexuality then becomes something to use 
people. Also, the demonization right. of fat people is not something that you like, but you just like that it's actually being talked about and showcased in a show rather than just being yeah. something that's kind of swept under the rug. And also this right. idea of isolation and feeling alone and potentially fucking up all of our resources to the point where it's like I paid X amount of credits to get a fucking apple today. Isn't that swell? We never see them eating other than that one time at the fucking vending machine. Yeah. And then they're all, by the way, in the same exact hoodies until they show that they can be – they can do a little bit for – quote, unquote, a little bit for society – uh, or just quote unquote doing anything really in terms of them, you know, being entertainers. Oh, I'm an entertainer. Oh, I'm a singer. Oh, uh, I can do a podcast. And just right. just doing that alone, nothing else. Not like being a good person, not doing any kind of philanthropy, not trying to do better. Not just any, not any of that at all, right? In fact, again, they're praised for demonizing people that are overweight. Right. Yeah. So you could say like, oh, I <laughs> like that that was addressed. Like, really, you could consider yeah. this not like a documentary because that's way too off base, but you could consider it a kind of like, it, like yeah, I hate saying reflection because I don't want to fucking make mirror jokes, but still, you yeah. can say it like that. Yeah. You yeah. can say it like that versus saying, I really liked episode two because they were mean to fat people. It's like, no. <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, no. Stop. Also. Stop. <laughs> Exactly. Like I'm not. I'm not going to hold your feet to the fire over that. As, even as a joke, uh, at least not on not on the podcast. But still, I could joke with you. But, said, but not on the podcast. I'm going to be like, oh, so you're just being mean to? No, of course not. But episode three as well. I'm not going to sit here and be like, so you liked it when he called her that? No. The fucking eye implant was very interesting because, I mean, hell, look at Google Glass. Do you remember Google Glass or no? Oh God. Yeah. yeah. Everyone fucking hated that to the point when, even though I do not advocate uh, for assault at all, we do not, it was interesting to see how people were actually getting threatened or literally uh, either threatened or actually getting hit if someone saw them with Google Glass because they were looking at that like, hey, I'm just trying to live my life. Here you are fucking recording me like a narc. Take that off. Now, I'm not saying people should have done that, but people were. People were saying, hey, I was wearing Google Glass and I got assaulted, which right. is not is not funny in the traditional sense. But one could argue it's only funny because it's like, well, at least you know who the perp is. It's recorded. So unless they were broken. But um, although I don't know how you could extract the data because I don't know how the fuck that even worked. I just know that Google was like, let's innovate for the future. And then they were like, wait a minute. Nobody likes being recorded. Who fucking knew, Tristan? All those engineers in California, nobody thought, does anybody want to be recorded? Does anybody like them? People stream themselves, but like, nobody wants to fucking, you know, be recorded on the street. Right. Anyway, still, what I'm trying to get at here, though, is you can pick, say, you can say, I enjoy the concepts without saying you enjoy everything that the entire episode had to, you know, came, came in it. Like, if you said to me, I enjoy Star Wars, I'm not going to imagine you're like, he only likes the prequels and none of 4, 5, and 6. He doesn't. <clears throat> he only watches Han Solo, a solo story, the solo wing. He only watches that on repeat. He never watched it. He never watches any other. He said every other movie was terrible. I don't expect yeah. that from you when you say you like Star Wars. Yeah, no, that's fair. I just, I, I guess I have such a hard time with it because I don't. Usually, I know how to categorize things in my head, mm. and usually it's not so hard for me to be like, yeah, I enjoyed this. This is just like I, ah, uh, I. Yeah, think no. For some I reason, I do. For some reason, the horrifying things. But it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's weird for me because I'm not trying to, because look, you and I don't clearly have the same anxiety in this regard. So in no way am I going to sit here and berate you for it. The only reason why it confuses me personally, and I'm not supposed to get it. I'm supposed to accept it because I love you. But it just confuses me because we watch Attack on Titan. I'm just saying, like, like if you tell me, like, I love Attack on Titan, I'm like, his arm was ripped off the fucking socket via a jaw. And I mean, again, that might also be because that's 
uh, you know, animated, so there's a little bit of a disconnect in there. That's true. But, um, definitely. No, no, actually, I'll give you I that mean, there were definitely times where I felt uneasy in there and the sense of dread. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's just the overwhelming sense of dread. Mm. And this is... I don't know, but because I, there's so many yeah. points where it kind of dances on the line of things might work out. Oh, no, wait, no, they're not. Well, the thing I, is, for me... This is the thing, I don't two, know how to put it into words. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's well, frustrating the thing is, with, me the most, because I can't make yeah. the point and actually explain it now. I see where you're coming from, but with two, I feel like that's the one that's filled with, like, the most dread. Even yeah. though I like the concepts the most dread because yeah. with three I, mean, I think the thing that tense, got me with two the but, most yeah because mm. i think two is the one that got me the mo- the worst because yeah. i mean also you had that little awkward like love story starting to blossom and then i thought that was going to become you know a huge love triangle between the three of them oh. i didn't know where it was going at first and i'm like oh god is this no please no please no god no no. Yeah, no, Tristan Tristan doesn't like love triangles because he hates love. And I I love you. Uh I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And so yeah. No no no, but I actually un- Sorry about that. No 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 no. But I actually understand why you dislike love triangles because usually in American media they are not done well. No. Yeah. It's just maximum drama. And it's like I don't need any yeah. of this. But, no, but I don't need this. <laughs> but I think Please, I think but I think after seeing where it went, you're like, I would have preferred a love at Triangle. I would have preferred a drama. Yeah. Um, and I think it was obviously the, you know, the whole American Idol. And maybe not even, yeah. and like, not just strictly American Idol. Like, a lot of shows like that were the panel of judges. But obviously that's that was the parody they were going for. Exactly, um, yeah. It wasn't, the, it wasn't praising them. It was, it was the exact opposite. Right. Yeah, and like just hearing uh, them talk and hearing you know the main the main character following like you know you you treat everyone up here that they're just confetti they're just fake they're just another thing to laugh at and, you know it's like you don't actually treat anyone like people up here. Yeah, and you know and the we, way they talk yeah. to the girl before him you know saying oh yeah your voice is great but it's only good but you know what's really great your tits and it's like uh, oh okay Oof. and like. Yeah, Again, no. that's a thing we struggle with in the real world, too, which is also yeah, another no. point. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. I like the fact that this show is showing the darker side of humanity because we need to be put face-to-face with it to be like, hey, don't actually fucking do that because you're horrifying yeah. or you're an asshole or both. Yeah. One thing I also found interesting as well with those three panels of judges is how I don't know if they're like part of like a higher council because we have no idea how the fuck any of this even runs properly. But right. what I think is interesting is what the guy on the far right, even though he judges the singing, it seems like he's definitely in the pool of daytime talk show type scenarios. Like right. how he was easily able to be like, I'll give you 30 minutes a day, you know, every week. Uh, basically having like this randy type internet talk show. And then we have the woman in the middle who she said, sorry, we already have all these singing slots filled. I'm wondering if she's running the singing portion of this or if she said the singing slots for the guy on to the right of her is filled. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. And then the guy on the left is the one who's running the adult film industry. Right. And he was on there to quote unquote have a change, which is so funny how even though it's the world that they live in, they said something that's so universally understood in our world, in our language. Yeah, we need something to spice things up, so let's get a guy who's a bit more risque on here. Right. So it's interesting that they that, you know, they said like, Yeah, he's new to the panel, you know, the guy who's and then the fact that they could actually recruit people from there, because I thought at first it was more like American Idol when really it's kind of like that America's got talent talent or like Britain's got talent. Right. Because yeah. anyone can do anything on there. So you don't have to be like you can be an America's got talent and you're a comedian or you're which I don't know how comedy would work in that world. Why is everything so bleak? What's the deal with the apples? Are they born in a petri dish or not? Um, oh my god! But like, no, but like, how would you fucking do comedy in that shitty ass world? What's right. the deal yeah. with fat people? 
Like, I don't know what you would say. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, yeah, like, what's the deal with these yellows? Like, I don't know what you would fucking say. Like, yeah, I, I don't know what you, like, what do you say? Like, I don't know how you could make comedy in that bleak-ass world. But still, right. my point is, my point is this, right? It, uh, I feel as if when it came, it was very interesting that you, that they could actually recruit people and be like, you know, I don't think you're good as a singer, but what if you did a podcast? Or what if you were nude? Sounds weird. But, you know, we pay well. Like, what the fuck? Like, how int- how strange is it that they were able to, like, recruit people from there? And because they literally, if she said no, which she should have done, they would have just told her, all right, then maybe try again in five years. I hope you cycle up to gain that 15 mil again. Right. Like, that's weird. Also, other rules that he broke, the main character, you know, going in, like, just eating other people's food and, like, taking the apples from the broken vending machine. You th- you would think that somebody would stop him in their very Orwellian, Logan's Run type society. Yeah. You'd think that someone would be like, that's against the rules because we're fucking authoritarians. So... I guess the idea no one cared enough. <laughs> Which is funny, because, yeah, I guess maybe, like, what, what the the janitors who are, God knows what's happening to them, God knows where they fucking live. That's where he lived. Right. God knows where they, they live, you know, the janitors in yellow. God knows what's going on with them. What are they going to do? Like, they have, they have a set of rules, sure, but, like, they're not going to go out of their fucking way. Yeah. Oh, the sad, one of the saddest things in that episode... Uh, when we see the main character in his penthouse drinking orange juice, which I guess is a luxury for them, shit. Um, yeah. He he had a penguin. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the weirdest thing to me, is that, so you have a better life now, sort of. I guess that's okay. guess nothing else matters anymore because you sold out. Well, here's the thing. They had to cycle every day just to get money, which, I mean, <laughs> equivalent to us. Oh, just to live. To have, yeah. yeah, to live. That's the thing. It was to live. It wasn't, it wasn't even like he, you know, oh, like he didn't, like the way he cycled, like just to get that 15 mil, that wasn't, oh, I'm working hard. He would have, if he didn't steal food, technically, would have went without meals. Right, yeah. No bueno. Not good. So he had to endure a lot of shit just to get that 15 mil, just to get that opportunity again. So what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to get at in particular is I know it's bad that he sold out, but like he was like, there was no, I'm going, if I kill all three of you, then we're free. No, right. It would just be somebody else to replace them. Yeah. I'm not saying he should have sold out. I'm just saying that like, I don't right. Okay, I know. hear it me out. The here. idea, you know, if in their if. position, it's kind of like, of course, who wouldn't? It's you know, they live in a hole in the wall and they barely get to eat. Of course, they would, kind of. But like, it just felt like he was trying to prove a point, and he did. Mm-hmm. And then it all. And that's the point. Shit. No, anyway. and, and that is the yeah. point. That is the theme, right. right? Like, if I'm giving an, I mean, think about it like this, right? If I. If I was giving an angry rant about you know our government, doesn't matter what government it is, doesn't matter who's in power. If I'm giving an angry rant, and someone on TV, right, fucking television news or television you know opinion pieces are super corporate and super sanitized, so they take my angry rant, and they're like, we would like to hire you to do this once a week, and I rant every week, but I can't rant too hard because then I can't I can't rant against certain advertisers. Right. So like it's like it's a bit different than like, you know, our world because like yes, YouTube and Twitch, there's like certain guidelines there of course, but I don't know who what ad is going to be playing. So if I say something shitty about a certain company, I don't know if they're going to be playing an ad before or after or during right. my video. But on television, yeah. that was the whole thing. It's like, "Oh, you just take something that's pure and true and raw and you just break it down and mold it down into something that you need to, you know, set like make it edible and palpable and all this stuff." And then they do that with him. Like, it's the perfect way to end the episode. I don't like it, but it's the perfect way to end it. What I was saying, though, is yeah. 
calling him a sellout. Like, I understand, but, like, it's not like people don't do some things like that now. Not completely, 100%. Oh, yeah. But, like, some people – because to be fair, there is, like – we live in the real world, so, like, you have to market your shit. So you have to be flying around, going on planes, doing all that shit just to promote your shit. You can't just do a 30-minute show and be good most of the time. Right. Unless you're so good with your show, like money-wise, that you can pay other people to do everything else. But even then, doing an appearance somewhere else on an inter- internet talk show to you know promote whatever you're doing, that is work. Yeah, I'm not saying it's hard, bra- you know, back-breaking work. You're not in a field or anything like that. But still, getting out of your house to not do a 30-minute stream every day is work. It's a bit different than his life, which is truly pampered. Because all he has to do is sit in there all day. Doesn't get the ads. Doesn't – God, I don't know what he has, but he doesn't get the ads. He has all that space. He can see the outside. He has juice and drinks and all that shit. And he just has to do do that 30-minute show, and he's set for life. Also, how funny would it be if the glass broke? That would be funny. Oh, God. There was time now. <laughs> he just he looks at his he looks at his drinking glass. I'll break this. Fuck it. Just oh, God. I liked him. I liked him when it was the longer piece of glass. But when it was broken off of the glass cup, I just felt like he jumped the shark, man. Oh my god. Um, but seriously, though, all jokes aside, um, it, it, I don't know. I I think episode two really draws me in just for the whole you know streaming and content creation like concepts and also taking a shot at people with you know fat phobia and being too into health nothing wrong with being healthy but when you're sitting there like oh i'm i want to give my baby slim fast it's like what the fuck is wrong with you yeah uh, oh, by the way that's bad. happened yeah oh good god Pe- people have said that oh my baby's too fat i want to give him slim fast what and understandably those children have thankfully been taken away from those parents because holy shit. Right. You're supposed to have a fat baby after the nutrients. Yeah. What? You see why people say, well, time to blow it up and not probably not start over again because dear God. (laughs) There was time now. Time to just destroy everything and, and just no. <laughs> That's well, it. human race is done. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, I no. I like hearing that, and it's just like, hmm. And there's hope for the human race. Why? Oh, no, I never said that there was. Okay, that's different. No, there's difference between yeah. there's no hope for the human race versus you advocating for Godzilla in the 2020 election. <laughs> there's a difference, Tristan. By the way, I'm pretty sure I he's mean, running, actually. Don't think I wouldn't. I'm pretty that. sure he's running. I, I know, I'm pretty sure they made that joke again, because Japan makes that joke every once in a while that he's running. Oh, that's lovely. I know, I fucking love it. But anyway, yeah, there's a difference between saying there's no hope for humanity. I'm right there with you, but saying, like, I'm pro the Godzilla party. Like, there's a difference. Is anyway. There, is there not? <laughs> Slightly. Anyway, so I... Oh. Uh, letting it happen is different than advocating for it. Um, uh, anyway. Wait. Anyway. <laughs> I think we're fucking done here, Tristan. I said we got canceled. I said we got canceled an hour ago and he just took it to heart. Yep. Really took this one to heart. Anyway, uh yeah, my favorite episode. Mm, Jody Whitaker, I loved her in three, but I don't know if three is mm, mm, it, I'm gonna go with two. It just made me feel a lot more than three did. Like, if I had to show someone, like, if someone t- told me, what is the first episode, you know, I want to watch Black Mirror, what do I start with? I'd probably say two. Yeah, I would as well. That's what I think, right? Like, <laughs> and then I'd be like, yeah. and if you're feeling really brave, you can watch the first one. <laughs> Granted, <laughs> I, see, that's the thing. It's funny, because I had people, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but, like, people were, you know, saying, oh, you know, pig bucking, oh, my God, and, like, that's all I heard about it. 
and I'm like actually watching the episode. I'm like, that was not as graphic as I was led on to believe it would be. Yeah, I forgot, and I thought it was going to be more graphic too. I had forgotten that it's just the idea of seeing his face and other people's faces. Like, it was bad. Yeah. But I then had to remember, right, this was aired on television, not on Netflix. Right. Because if this was aired on Netflix, they would have gotten a pig prop. Yeah. Because they don't fucking give a shit. Like, I've seen some of the shit that I've seen on Netflix, nothing as crazy as that. But, I like, if you watch, you've seen some of the Marvel shows. Some of them are fucking intense. Like, one episode of one show, I'm not telling you which one, because I don't want to spoil it for you. One guy was this very, like, he was Japanese, and he was very much like this huge, he wasn't like a ninja, but he was, like, very powerful. And th- and another character came up to him to talk to him. And it's interesting because she was speaking in English. He was speaking in Japanese with English subtitles. He apparently was called like the hunter or something like that. He legit had killed a bear. And as he's talking to her, he's having a polite, normal conversation while removing the entrails of a fucking bear. Right. As it lays on a table. And I'm sitting there like, dudes. I just want to fucking watch TV with some food. I'm not fucking watching Friday the 13th here. Yeah, right. I'm not <laughs> watching, you know, uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm not watching Halloween. I'm not fucking sitting here thinking, oh, I would like to see some Hellraiser today. Granted, that one is much <laughs> worse than anything I've just said. But still, if I wanted to watch Hellraiser, I'd be like, yo, let me, because I really actually do want to watch it. I've never seen it before, but I've seen some clips. I would like to watch Hellraiser. I would like to watch Saw if I wanted to. But I'm not going to sit here and try to watch a Marvel show where a dude is literally ripping the insides out of a bear while having a conversation while you see a fake bear's head staring into the camera with his tongue out. Right. I don't need that. So, so in my head, I'm like, they'd probably have shown the pig if this was made on Netflix first. But it wasn't. It had to be aired on British television. So they had to have a small amount of restraint. Right. Could you imagine that conversation? How much of the pig can we show? Oh, my God. Only outside of the context of having sex with it. (laughs) Other than that, no. Not even a shot of just the pig, not with the man in the shot, just the pig. Nope, 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 nope. No. Even that would be illegal. How interesting would that be, right? Like, they have to dance around those regulations. Yeah, right. (laughs) Nope, Um, none of that. It's like, but he's not in the shot. Nope, but it is implied that it is happening in that moment. No, but like seriously though, like they probably could legally only show the pig eating it, eating the food. Oh yeah, yeah. Not even because I'm not saying that you know they wouldn't they would ha- not have him in the shot. They would not even have him superimposed in there. He wouldn't even be in the same room. But if they showed the pig during the moment that they were all watching, that might actually be considered illegal. Right. No FCC, but still, just that one call. You guys are fucking weird. Yeah. Click. <laughs> you guys are the weird kids. Click. Just one fucking call. That's weird. <laughs> Click. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah, yeah, so I think we're do- I think we're done here. I think this is it. I hope you enjoyed your Black Friday. Cool. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. I hope if you shopped. You shopped indoors, but also remember that when you do shop indoors, there's some people who might not be able to be with their families if you shop indoors. So maybe, I don't know, maybe do that around Black Friday, but not specifically on Black Friday. Because some places have Black Friday weekend deals as well, which, why not? You know? Right. Yeah. Because I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. Because, again, I'm hoping you guys stayed home with your families, had fun, post-Thanksgiving Day fun, turkey, ham. Actually, be careful with the turkey. I know it's a bit too late now when you're listening to this, but the turkey, there's been some a salmonella outbreak from what I heard. So I hope um, yeah. if you are recovering from that right now, you're listening to us. And also understand that most of what Tristan said was just you imagining it under a salmonella poisoning. Uh, That's great. Am I, is, is that what I am to you, Matt? Am I just salmonella poisoning? I'm just a hallucination to you? I mean, you're probably right, but... <laughs> That's, this episode of Black Mirror has been sponsored by Turkey. Anyway, it's been sponsored by Produce. Um, 
I'm just a, anyway. I'm just a fraction of your psyche that you've created to help keep going with podcasts. Okay, so glass you. isn't out yet. We have to talk about that <laughs> next year. <laughs> We're talking about that in a different episode altogether. It's not, it's not, not out yet. Anyway, well, there so. You go. There we go. Love you all. Thank you all so much. Take care and tune in next time for something completely different. No idea what it's coming up next. We have some stuff that's pre-recorded, uh, so that will probably be out next week because I think we're taking the weekend off. But remember, you can still find a bunch of different podcasts over to Those Guys on the Radio YouTube channel. Same thing with our Those Guys Play channel. You can find a bunch of different gaming stuff, either Let's Plays, other gaming uh, like reviews, and other kind of retrospectives and things like that. Go check that out over at our Those Guys Play channel. We have our TG Productions channel as well. Uh, TG Productions channel as well. I have to shatter this. Where we also do a bunch of different fun stuff like reviews, and we have some interesting podcasts there as well. Uh, really fun stuff there. More of our esoteric content will go on there. And you can also support us in any way by going to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Productions. Depending on what tier you go to, you can either just give us a nice little support, so that a little, little dollar just helps us keep the lights on. The lights just flickered as I said that. Or... Depending on what tier you go to, you can either uh, suggest content for us, either podcast content or Let's Play content or other gaming content, or what could happen as well is I do a, ma- a series of Matt rants over at our Those Guys Play channel. Uh, you can listen to them there. You can go to the channel and them there. But if you want them in MP3 format, then you can actually go to our Patreon. Same thing when it comes to our Kekaku Corner episodes. We have, yes, Kekaku Corner, where on those episodes we uh, talk about different daily news topics, either in the anime make comic book uh and also not manga realm as well and just other general nerd pop culture stuff you can get whole episodes of those from our patreon same thing with anastation and anime review series that i do over at our tg productions channel and 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 toku station which is uh, either tokusatsu and tokusatsu explain. reviews a different explain tokusatsu reviews for Toku Station, or also a show like uh, Kekka uh, Corner, but specifically with Tokusatsu. So, Tokusatsu News Topics. So, you can get all that stuff, depending on what tier you give to, again, patreon.com slash Productions and t-shirts as well, that'll be linked somewhere around somewhere. And you can go to our Twitter, at Those Guys Radio, to follow everything that we do. Same thing with our Facebook, facebook.com slash Those Guys on the Radio, or our main website, tgproduction.net slash well, merchandise if you want the shirts, but in general, tgproduction.net. All right, guys, thank you all so much. Love you all. Take care. Hope you had a fun day. Hope you have more fun days to come. Wasn't the family great on Thanksgiving? Weren't they splendid? You all agreed on everything. It was wonderful. All right. I... Tristan? I cannot tear my eyes away from the mirror, Matt. Excellent. Excellent. That sounds extremely healthy. Goodbye, everybody. See ya. Goodbye.